Welcome back, Rankers. A lot of interest in the changes to Google last week. Now, <coughs> if you haven't been keeping up, there's been about eight changes this, this year just to, to the Google algorithm. So if you are doing SEO yourself, you really need to keep uh, abreast of these changes. The, the one change that Google added last week was the, uh, the one that interested me the most anyway, was the Wonder Wheel. Because it gives us more of an insight into what people are typing in. So it's pointless for a real estate agent, as I've said many times before, to rank for the phrase real estate. The reason being is that it's going to cost a lot of money, time and effort to get to number one for real estate. However, the conversion on that phrase for that real estate agent is going to be low. The reason for that is that the real estate agent probably only services a particular geographic area. So, or may only specialise in a particular type of, uh, they might be co a commercial real estate agent. So, what you always have to do with your keywords is start with around five phrases, is what we usually say. And by targeting those five phrases, you try to get a good cross-section of words in them. And then what tends to happen is that you will rank for hundreds. Like, for instance, um, we rank number one for appear on the first page of Google, but what we also rank for is how do I get on front page Google? And we get that typed in quite a lot, although we didn't try to rank for that. So my point here is, is that a real estate agent should try to rank for something like real estate, carom downs, four bedroom, home, open fireplace. That's what is going to convert better for the real estate agent than just the phrase real estate. Now, if we have a look at the Wonder Wheel, I've just typed in here swine flu. You may have heard of that. It's been in the news recently. Um, and we, we look at the Wonder Wheel and what the Wonder Wheel is starting to tell us. It, here are some other phrases that are related to swine flu that possibly are getting good searches or there's a, a lot of interest in the content around these phrases. Now what we tend to do is use these as springboards, if you like, to all the phrases that we need to capture. So what I would tend to do is look at this Wonder Wheel here and then we go across to Google Insights for search. And here I've just done a bit of a search. I've put in swine flu, swine flu symptoms, and pandemic. And we're looking at the last 30 days. Now, down here, you will see uh, the graph, the, the graphs for us, the popularity of these phrases, how often these phrases are getting searched. So we can see here, of course, the blue one is swine flu, and it's, it, it really was peaking uh, around late April. And then these other ones, pandemic and swine flu symptoms, were getting uh, a lot less, but you can see that the peak matches the swine flu peak as well. Now, to, to, to put some perspective in this, let's just type the word sex in and see what happens. Lo and behold, people talk more about sex than they do swine flu, which is heartening, I think. Uh, but what's interesting here in the in the sex one is that it seems to peak at the same time every month. I'll let you um, draw your own conclusions on that one. Uh, but the reason I show you that is it just tries try to put the the volume of searches, which is what this graph is showing, without giving you actual numbers. They're all relative to each other. Uh, it puts the volume in perspective, I think. So we know now that. Swine flu, which is the base phrase, is getting the most searches. Probably it's not going to convert well for you though. So, go back to the Wonder Wheel. Have a look at these ones. Swine, swine flu, let's go swine flu vaccine and see what that tells us. Okay, so now we've got swine flu epidemic, swine influenza virus. A whole lot of variations on the phrase swine flu. I would go back to... Google Insights for Search, throw some of those in and see what comes back. Because we've done this exercise um, a number of different ways and we've used a lot of keyword tools over the years. And most of the keyword tools are going to give you different results to each other. Like if I go and type those phrases now into Google Keywords AdWords tool, which I know a lot of you use, um, you will find that it will start. It will give us different results to what the Google Insights for Search tool has done. Now, the reason for this is that um, uh, Google lies. No, uh, the reason for this 
is that people don't all type in the same thing. Okay, so whilst you target five phrases, you then need to carefully watch your um, Google Analytics and find out how people are reaching your site with what phrases. Because as you start ranking for those phrases, you will also start ranking for others. You know, as I've said before, we rank number one for appear on the first page of Google, but we also rank number one for a whole variety of phrases stemming from that phrase. So front page of Google, or how to appear front page Google. A whole lot, lots of varieties. So when you rank for the five phrases, you then start to rank for hundreds. And then you can see, by the traffic that you're getting from those other phrases, what you should be focusing on. Use the wonder wheel for inspiration. Use the wonder wheel to get an idea of maybe a niche that you should be focusing on. Like, I mean, this one here, Gillian Barre syndrome swine flu. I don't know what that is. One of the interesting ones I found over the weekend, and I don't know whether it's still there, but if you typed in SEO Melbourne into, uh, whoops, Oh, my keyboard, my keyboard's busted. Yes, here we go. If you type in SEO Melbourne, and we look at the Wonder Wheel, we've got Ugg boots. Now, I don't know whether Google's trying to tell us something about Melbourne, um, but to me, that's slightly unrelated to SEO. I don't know why it's there, but there must be a reason the algorithm picks something up. Um, some of the other things that uh, uh, that you can do too, if if you look at say professional speakers, which we've targeted before in the show, the Wonder Wheel will nice related speaker related all relevant phrases on the Wonder Wheel. Now, if we if we go and have a look at related searches, we can see up here all of a sudden. Uh, we're bringing in audio speakers. So Google's still quite dumb as far as, it, but it is only an algorithm, right? So it doesn't actually, at this stage anyway, understand completely what the words mean even in their context. He doesn't know whether I'm looking for speakers for my car or someone to speak at my next event. Which brings me to my next point. Um, a lot of people keep uh, asking, you know, can we get um, can we get consulting from Stuart Media? We don't actually do consulting because it's uh, what ends up happening is you go and do the consulting, tell people how to do all this stuff, and then they tend to go, okay, that's a lot of work. We're not really in that business. Can you do it for us? So what we tend to do is run free seminars, speak at events, that sort of thing. So if uh, you are looking for a speaker for your next event, I'd be happy to oblige, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun talk about. Um, uh, um, SEO. Now, uh, for those of you in New Zealand, uh, looks like we might be back there late July doing some workshops, so stay tuned for more information on that one. And uh, look, if you, if you are trying to do this yourself, try to use these tools and don't get hung up and don't get stuck on a particular phrase that you want to rank number one for. The trick here is, is to, to rank for Good phrases that you think people are going to be typing in, of course, but be prepared to rank for things that are slightly different. For instance, the work choice example that um, that we did, I don't know, three or four years ago now, and for those of you not in Australia, um, work choice was a, a popular industrial relations phrase. Um, when we did that, we were actually trying to rank for the word work choice. We were trying to rank for work choice, as you can see over here from the result, industrial relations policy. Uh, that's what we were ranking, and of course we ranked for that. But we also now rank for a variety of phrases around that. To the point where we get people, because we rank number two, we get people ringing us, um, wanting to know what their obligations under work choice are. Now, initially we thought that um, because we rank number two for that phrase, people automatically assume that we're the authority. And of course, if you go to that page, it's a very, very ugly page, and it quite clearly states that we're not the work choice authority. However, people still keep ringing us up, wanting to know what their obligations are. Even to the point last week where we had someone ring up and we said, oh, you've obviously um, heard about us 
um, or through through Google. You looked up Google and saw one number two and said, so you, you rung us, you idiot. Um, but the person said, well, no, actually, Vodafone gave me your number. So Vodafone are using Google as their directory assistance tool. So even the large corporates are, are placing a lot of investment in, or importance at least, in who is ranking in the top three. So thank you Vodafone for those calls. However, can you please forward them to the number one result in Google? And that's it for today's show. If you've got any news, send it through. We'll have a look at it. Um, and if you've got any questions, send them to me via Twitter. And for those of you on audio, that's at Jimboot. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.